Good evening and welcome to Money Matters. My name is Kim Hatson. I'm a business attorney at Millcrest Law in Radnor, Pennsylvania. I focus my practice in the areas of life sciences, technology, and healthcare. Tonight we're continuing our series on life sciences leaders in the Delaware Valley. Before we get started, I want to remind our viewers that from time to time, financial issues related to life sciences, technology, or healthcare matters or companies will be discussed on the show. These discussions are not and should not be viewed as financial advice. Moreover, since the show is pre-recorded and shown at a later time, the information may no longer be current. You should always check with your financial advisor before entering into any financial transaction. I'm happy to have with me as my co-host this evening, Charlie Huntington. Charlie is the chairperson for public relations for Life Sciences PA. Life Sciences PA is the voice of advancement for the life sciences industry in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Charlie, thanks for co-hosting. Thanks, Kevin. It's a pleasure to be here. Charlie, I was wondering if you might take a minute and uh, tell our viewers what's new at Life Sciences PA. Thank you for the question. Uh, I would say that the most, uh, the thing that I am happiest about is to announce that uh, there's something called at LSPA, which is, if you've ever visited uh, Life Sciences PA's headquarters on Swedesford Road in Wayne, they have taken new space, uh, about 4,200 square feet that you as a member or member company can use to have board meetings, you can entertain clients there. They really want to use it as sort of the industry hub mm -hmm. so more people get to know each other. We think it's a great way to help facilitate not only meetings and business today, but basically run into people who could help you with business tomorrow. So we couldn't be more excited about that, uh, and that, that will debut later this summer. Now, is it a single size room, or is there multiple rooms or various sizes? So it is, uh, it's going to be modular space in the middle, so walls can move, and then there will be okay. some conference rooms on the side where you can shut the door, you can do video conferences. It, it really is state-of-the-art space. That sounds great. So, Very useful. And right off the bat, it's going to be provided to member companies at no charge. That may change in the future, but right off the bat, to get the word out, that's that's the intent. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you for that update. Uh, well, uh, we have a terrific guest this evening, but before we get to our guest, I just want to remind our viewers that if you have a question that you would like us to answer on a future show, watch this video to learn how to do it. You can have your questions answered on Money Matters. Please go to our website, money-matters-tv.com. On our homepage, click on the banner on the right that says, Send us your questions. While you're on our website, you can find information about our hosts and guests, as well as show notes and links about this show and past shows. Money Matters is also available as a podcast on iTunes and Stitcher, so you can listen to Money Matters while you're on the go. That website address, again, is money, M-O-N-E-Y, dash matters, M-A-T-T-E-R-S, TV.com. It's with great pleasure that I introduce our special guest this evening, Dr. Oren Gilad. Dr. Gilad is the president, CEO, and co-founder of Atrin Pharmaceuticals, a Doylestown-based biopharmaceutical company focused on discovering and developing proprietary drugs for the treatment of cancers that currently do not have effective therapies. These proprietary drugs use technology developed in collaboration with the University of Pennsylvania, which has been licensed by Atrin from Penn in a royalty-free transaction. Dr. Gilad has authored several high-impact scientific articles, with the most recent one demonstrating the importance of the ATR pathway in cancer development and prevention. His extensive cancer research over the last several years has furthered his desire to develop a company that will be able to take these new concepts and bring new successful therapies to cancer patients. He's a member of the Biotechnology Advisory Committee at Bucks County Community College, and in 2015 was named a Greater Philadelphia finalist for Ernst & Young's Entrepreneur of the Year Award in the life science category. Oren received his BA in Animal Science from the Hebrew University in Israel and his PhD in Pathology from the University of California at Davis. Oren, welcome to the show. Thank you. 
Orrin, when we first met, um, I think I mentioned to you that many of the CEOs we have on this show uh, are, have never had any kind of entrepreneurial experience at all. A lot of them were research scientists. They may have been at universities or uh, maybe with a large pharmaceutical company and, have, and then went out and started their own company and really had no entrepreneurial ex experience. By contrast, um, you started your own company. It was, a, it was, I recall, a pet food and pet yes. supply company. Yep. You did that when you were in Israel, uh -huh. and I, my recollection was when you, returned, when you came to the States, you sold that company successfully, yes. and it's still operating, as I understand. Yes. Could you take a few minutes and tell our viewers a little bit about that experience? Yes, definitely. Th that company, I started when I was uh, an undergrad studying animal sciences. And Debbie, uh, my wife and I got a puppy, Casey. And we, she was full-time working at a law firm and I was full-time student. And we've been looking for somebody to deliver the food and the supplies to our house. And we couldn't find anybody. So I thought, oh, that's, there's a business opportunity here. Why don't I start a business? I'm studying uh, animal sciences. I understand a little bit about the physiology of the animals, nutrition, diseases. So one thing led to another, and before you know it, we became a mini distribution center where people would call and get the food supplies delivered on the same day. Wow. Um, so, so you ran that company then while you were in school? Yes, yeah. I was a student and uh, ran that company. So I started it from pretty much just that idea, and it grew and grew and grew, and then sold it because we moved to the States. Wow, and it's still, it's still operating today? It, it, as of, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. How about yeah. that? Um, who, are Ke who are Dr. Kevin Smith and Dr. Eric Brown, and how did you meet? So Eric is a principal investigator at the University of Pennsylvania. Eric is the father of the ATR uh, pathway. Eric was the first one to clone the gene uh, characterize it and uh, develop the, the initial assays to understand the biological aspect of this target. Eric is the smartest and the nicest person you will ever meet. It's a very co rare combination, very rare combination. Kevin, and I was a postdoc with uh, Eric uh, in Eric's lab at the time when we started. Kevin was a, a graduate student that was at our lab as well. And Kevin's work really uh, laid the foundation to our platform, Atris. He was the, the, uh, the one to identify the uh, phenomena that we then integrated and was part of the licensing agreement that we got from UPenn. Can you, can you just take a second and explain what the ATR pathway is? D definitely. So first, ATR stands for uh, ataxia, telogonacia, rat 3 related uh, proteins. It's a mouthful uh, <laughs> for, for, for uh, three uh, letters. ATR is the protein that is responsible for making sure that the DNA doesn't break. Okay. That, that's what it does. In, uh, and it sits right at the replication fork mm -hmm. uh, during DNA replication. So can, can you talk a little bit about the origins of Atrin Pharmaceuticals? The origin of Atrin Pharmaceuticals is actually very interesting. It's all started at a very tiny tissue culture room on the fifth floor of a BRB uh, research building at, the, at UPenn. And it started as one of these studies where we asked the question, what if? What if we reduce the level of ATR in cancer? How is that going to affect the cancer cell? So the initial study was tiny dish with four wells inside. One was control normal cells untreated. The second was control normal cells treated. Third was cancer cell untreated. And fourth was cancer cell uh, treated. And after a few days we came, we looked at the first one, normal cells treated, they're fine. Second one, sorry, normal cells untreated, they were fine. Second, normal cells untreated, uh, fine. Cancer cells untreated, fine. Cancer cells treated, there was nothing there. So what do you do when you see such result? You repeat the experiment. Again, and for the third time, for the fourth time, by the fifth time, everybody was working on it. So that was also the aha moment for Atrium because that's where I realized that money needs science in order to grow. Science need money in order mm -hmm. to progress. So the two are interconnected and they need each other. Mm -hmm. 
Um, how would you say your, your prior experience as an entrepreneur has helped you in your role as CEO of Atrium? I would like to answer that uh, not as just one event, uh, rather than a lifelong journey uh, of events. Okay. And by that I mean, so I grew up on the kibbutz. On the kibbutz, you learn the value of work. So uh, work ethics and work are value. You don't compromise. If you need to get up at four o'clock, get into the water of the fish pond, in the mud, you just do it because it's get, it needs to get done. So that's where you learn work ethics and, and community. Then I was a guide in the youth movement. That's where you learn about leadership. I joined the Air Force after that. You learn about teamwork. You learn about get the work done. You learn about it doesn't matter what it takes. Your body can be in pain or not. You just, that's the mission has to, uh, to achieve. And after that, I, I, I uh, traveled the world. When you have the open-minded, accepting different cultures and accepting others, even though they're different and not the same as we are. And from there, I started the academic career. So you get the understanding of biology, biological processes, cancer, normal, pathology, normal. And then with the, the business that we just discussed, I understood the business aspect of it. So all of that plus problem solving ability is really prepared me to run mm -hmm. a, a complicated business like Atrium Pharmaceuticals. What, what's the most challenging aspect of, of your role as CEO? I think there are, um, it's challenges. Every time you start from zero, every time you start from nothing to something, there are challenges. The initial challenge was how do you convince people to invest mm -hmm. when you have nothing? You have just an idea, you have just a dream, and everybody knows they're most likely to lose their money because it's a risky business. Most are failing. So that, that's the first challenge that uh, we had. Then when you start the operation, how do you attract uh, manpower? How do you attract skills? To, because it's not a big pharma, there's no stability. You can't promise, over-promise anything. So how do you attract um, skill sets that are needed for the company? Chemistry, biology. How do you convince lawyers to work with you when you don't have money to pay them? How do you maintain the manpower? So every day has a different challenge. IP, we're gonna be talking about IP. How do you create IP? How do you protect the IP? How do you know what to say, what not to say? There are challenges we're facing every day. So anything from financials to manpower to skill sets to relationships to it's fun. It's complicated and it's fun. Okay. Let's drill down a little on this IP. Okay. You have intellectual property. You're in the process. Uh, tell us where, what is it and where in the process are you? Atrian is very blessed. We, are, we have uh, currently four family of uh, patents. The first one is our ATR patent. It's composition of matter. It's everything surrounding the chemical series. That one should be issued uh, relatively soon. Mm -hmm. The second, uh, patent of, uh, second family of patents talks about our ability to lock the drug inside a cancer cell and kill that specific cancer cell. The third patent is the, are focusing on a hybrid. The fourth, we have a fourth patent. Also, Atrium has a pipeline. In addition to this uh, IP that we're protecting, they're more advanced. We also have a, a P53 activator. We have a mitotic inhibitor and we have a platform. So the company has four different patents two hits on different chemical series and platforms. So it's a multiple, it's not just one drug, one target, it's multiple drugs, multiple targets, multiple programs, and a platform, which is very useful. So where are you in the life cycle of each of these, developing each of these? The, the most advanced program, we are uh, about to start the, uh, the talk study and the studies that the FDA requires in order to allow you to start uh, human clinical trials. 
The other ones are a little bit behind. Uh, one of them, we're uh, about to start uh, animal studies. Um, so we, we developed uh, the chemical series. Uh, we're now uh, fine-tuning it to see which one, which molecule is uh, going to progress to uh, animal uh, studies. And the other ones are still uh, in uh, what's called the, the, the just the, the heat. So we got um, a chemical that is showing activity. It is behaving as expected, but it still needs to be modified and optimized before we advance it and put all of this money and resources towards. Because as a small company, you're running lean. You have to be very careful with the spending. And we are. Those are the the other two uh, that we have there. Okay. Uh, and you probably also have to be careful about which markets you're going to choose the definitely. patents in, right? De I mean, definitely. you've got an international background, so I'm sure that could be all the world or part of the world or none of the world. We, so. we, we just spend a lot of money on protecting our uh, patent, the, the lead patent, all over the world. And there, this is the one thing you do not save. So yeah. we actually took the big pharma approach and covered everything that they will cover. So in the due diligence, when we do talk to them, they're going to be impressed that a small company took a big company philosophy to protect the asset because that's where the value is. Good for you. Sure. Thank Good you. for you. Mm -hmm. So you all identified a need within cancer that, uh, tell, us, tell us about what that need was and what you're doing. I'm going to answer this question in two ways. The, the first is more a philosophical uh, answer that as long as people are dying from cancer, we should not stop. As long as people are dying from cancer, our job is not finished. Everybody has to move in, fully dedication, as many resources as possible to cure this disease. Cancer is a devastating disease. It's affecting everybody. It's not just the individual uh, that we're suffering, the family, the friends. It, it just, it's a horrible disease. That's, that's on the philosophical side, on the unmet medical need. On the target, we identified the ATR, we found it to be the Achilles heel of cancer. It's the one component that cancer cells cannot live without. So yeah. going after this Achilles heel, going after this pathway, and you know, making sure that it's not active, that's really what, where's the, 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 the sweet spot and where the selectivity we're seeing with minimum or no side effects when we treat uh, mice and, and, and cells. Do you think there's, uh, do you think other countries are doing it better than the United States right now in terms of uh, looking for, exploring treatments for cancer? I think that the uh, U.S. is definitely in the lead. Um, I th there is a lot of innovation that's done in the U.S. There are other countries like Israel who are also very innovative, but the majority of the innovation is definitely coming from the United States in the different therapeutic areas. Mm -hmm. So in the small molecule, also in the biological. Uh, we have, uh, at Penn, we have uh, car June who start with the car T. That's mm -hmm. huge breakthrough of uh, science and, and innovation. Mm -hmm. So the antibodies, all the immunotherapy, there are comp and uh, the CRISP, the DNA. Th there is so much that's taking place. If you go to ASCO, if you go to the uh, American Society of uh, Clinical Oncology, or the ACR, American Association for uh, Clinical C uh, Research for Cancer Research. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. The, there is so many U.S.-based companies that are presenting. Uh, yeah. So one thing also to go back to, to the question is that our finding, we were the first one to uh, publish about the target being, about, I'm sorry, about the ATR to be a good target for cancer therapy. Mm -hmm. The paper came out in 2010. The American Association for Cancer Research I recognize the importance of this work and ranked our work the top two, three percent for the year in their annual uh, meeting. Wow. So, and that's what really that's, got pharma. That's wonderful. Yeah, that's what, and because it was the first time that somebody really showed that moving from the life science, the biology, the basic research into target uh, therapy. So how are, how are other companies presently addressing this need? As far as the cancer, 
there are so many different approaches that are being taken by every company, uh, most companies out there, big size, large size, mid size, small size, and some approaches is more promised than, than the other. As far as the ATR, we are uh, competing with two pharma companies that are in early stage of development. For us, having competitors, it's great. First of all, it keeps everybody alert. Mm -hmm. You gotta be more productive. Mm -hmm. You gotta really make sure that you're making the progress. There's no time to sleep or, or you know, mm -hmm. laid back. You gotta move forward. Two, two or three horses make for a better race, right? Exactly, yeah. yes, <coughs> yeah. So we, we welcome competition, especially when we know that w we did the side-by-side -side comparison and we have a better drug. Our drug is water-soluble, it's already bioavailable, it's very selective, it's very specific, it kills the cancer. So having competition and knowing you're the best, it's even better. But what we benefit from this competition also is that they are validating the target. The fact that they are still in clinical trials, the fact that they didn't shut down or shut off their programs tells us that this is a good target for therapy. So we should be keep doing what we're doing and going after this target. It's, it's validation. So, you know, there's positive for a competition. That's great. What made the Philadelphia area an attractive location for Atrin? So what makes it for us, uh, when we first started here, that was by necessity because uh, Debbie, my wife, was working at Penn. I finished my postdoc with Eric at Penn. Our kids were going to the public schools, so we wanted to stay. And so happy that we did because there is so much talent uh, here. We had big pharma that have been training people for drug development, have been training people for uh, regulation, have been training for you know the, every step of the way. There is a great resource of talent and skills that we can uh, we have access to. Some of the farmer people who got laid off, opening shops uh, at different uh, area, uh, opening shops, providing services, mm -hmm. and we have the benefit to work with them. We just teamed up with a, with a group that is uh, helping us. They're so knowledgeable. They are so great. And having chemistry, they're, they're chems, there's everything in this mm -hmm. area. I just wish that we would be able to maintain the talent and not have it go to Boston. And I know people are moving to Boston because there's more uh, work and more jobs uh, there th than here. So the area, there's also capital here, but the capital I found is more for the later stage, not for the very early stage. Uh, but there is capital here to support uh, drug development, definitely. What are the most significant barriers to entry into your industry? Into the industry as a whole? Or in the, the cancer in treatment industry? Yeah, uh, uh, into the cancer treatment, it is complicated. You have to have enough capital to be able to run the program. You have to have the, the manpower and the skill sets to, to solve the problem. You have to have the management to predict and prevent the problem from happening in the first place. So money matters, definitely. Money does matter. <laughs> Talent matters, definitely. And you need to have so many different things working in sync and harmony in order to progress and be successful and make, what, 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 and make on the promises and hit the milestones along the way. Okay. Tell us about the funding. And I know we have limited time left. Tell, tell us about how you're being funded right now, how you sort of see the future. We are being funded by uh, ho home offices, angels, and individuals. Um, we're, in, for the future, I can tell you that if I see a dog, I talk to the dog, because maybe <laughs> on the other side of the leash, there is an investor. So we're talking to everybody. Everybody is- uh, All is of in, Casey's friends. All of Casey's <laughs> friends, yep, yep. And I go with food, okay, no, you know, <laughs> dog chow. Smart man. <laughs> Get the That's dog right. first before you head to the owner. Um, so moving forward, we are talking to family offices, we're talking to ventures, we're talking to certain ventures, because you, you want to have a match. You don't just talk, you don't bring money from everybody. You want to make sure that it's uh, money that will help you grow and they do see the vision and they do agree with where the company is heading and not just flipping it or, uh, you know, 
making drastic uh, changes. Uh, we're talking to also a farmer for strategic partners uh, there as well, and there is interest. And what's interesting there is that different pharma has different philosophy. Some are more interested in indication, some are interested in the pathway. We're lucky that our target hits a broad spectrum of cancers because of the mechanism of action. So we can cater to multiple farmers based on their needs. Some are interested only in immunotherapy. So you know, we, we are addressing that uh, as well. So really looking at uh, investment banking, we've already been approached by investment banking, start building relationships because they see, okay, if this is going to be successful, we want to be part of, part of it, right? So really covering and, and going after the entire gamut of uh, funding resources, including uh, grants, non-dilutive grants. We just received uh, last year, we received two hundred thousand dollars from the NCI, which is we have only maybe about fifteen more seconds before okay. we have to go. So also non-diluting fundings. Um, uh, just quickly, um, if you could sum it up, and I'm, this might be too difficult to do, but what would success look like for Atrium? Two ways. One, if we can cure cancer, if we can treat people, that's a huge success. There is a phrase in Judaism: you saved one person, and you, as if you saved the entire world. That's success. Financial is another success because I want to make sure that those who sp has supported us early on, that took the risk, they're going to have a nice return on, doing, on the investment. We are a link in the chain. We are benefiting from those who were behind before us, who were successful. It, they, we got investment because of that. We want to make sure that we're here to help those in the future who, who will need the capital to progress on other unmet medical needs. You okay. pull, that, pull that off, that'll make you a very popular entrepreneur. Yeah, you're not <laughs> best working best on of luck. Thank Listen, you. Th thank you so much. We're out of time. It went very quickly. Uh, my, my thanks to our special guest tonight, Dr. Oren Gilad. Also, Charlie, thank you for co-hosting. Pleasure. Um, the next guest on Money Matters will be Thomas Ronfola. He's the president and CEO of Syngenius Inc., uh, which is a provider of complete IT services and support. Money Matters is now available as an audible podcast on iTunes and Stitcher Radio, listed as Money Matters, the podcast for mobile devices. The video is available on our YouTube channel as well as on our website. Thank you very much for watching this evening, and we'll see you again next time.